In this episode, I'm gonna teach you how to make the most amazing roasted venison loin with the delicious venison sauce made with cognac. I'm gonna serve that with rate potatoes, pickled beetroot, and a little bit of tender stem broccoli. Let's get cooking. The first thing that we're gonna do is make the venison sauce. So, exactly the same as any of the other sauces. Pan, nice and hot. Oil in the pan. Ask any of you butcher, or you can probably get some from the local supermarket. I'm gonna use a venison loin for this dish. So, any of the trim, just say to your butcher, when you prep the venison loin, please don't throw any of the trim or bones away. Can I have them? And he'll kindly chop them up for you like this. So, venison trim to the pan. Make sure your pan's nice and hot so it's sizzling. Just leave that in the pan, get a good caramelization on it again. And like any of the other sauces that I've said, kind of starts off with the basics again. So we got our carrot. Nice and chunky like all the others. Okay. We're going straight in with the trim. Onions, again just quarter. You know, and I think one thing that everybody will notice is that from making these sauces now, it was all down to the first process at the start, which was the stocks. Once you've made the stocks at the start, the rest of it is really, really easy. And again, you can experiment with anything, you know. I, I'm throwing in different ingredients that I put in my sauces, but you know, if you're thinking of oh, venison sauce, venison and juniper works really, really well, just add some juniper berries to it. If you think that you'd like to add a little bit of rosemary in the sauce because you think that rosemary works really well with venison, it does. Add that to it if you like. Pine as well, you know. Deer are often in the woods. What's in the woods, lots of pine trees, so it gives it that nice floral note. If you just want to add a couple of little pine leaves to there or pine branches, that'll give it a really nice flavor too. So all in the pan there now, we've got some leeks, carrots, onions, and our venison trim. So we're just gonna give that a nice little stir around. Okay, so next, what have I got? In here, I've got a little bit of red currant jelly. This is gonna add a little bit of sweetness to the dish. Venison is game, and it has got a gamey flavor to it. So to counteract that strong gamey flavor, we just add a little bit of the red currant jelly. You can buy that in any supermarkets, in jars, whatever you like. Add, I don't know, probably about 300 grams of red currant jelly to that. And that's gonna slightly caramelize in the pan. So in with the red currant jelly, you'll hear the pan, the noise of the pan change. And you'll see it just starting to bubble. It starts to bubble and caramelize really, really quick because the red currant jelly is so high in sugar. So give that a nice little stir. Right, in here now we've got some cognac. Entirely up to you as well. You can put whatever you like in it. Whiskey works really, really well with venison. Uh, sherry works really well with venison. I decided to use cognac in this recipe because I think it suits the dish best. So in with the cognac. Again, cook that down for a second. In here we've got our veal stock. And then we've got our brown chicken stock as well. So, tiny touch of double cream. And just a couple of knobs of butter. So all we wanna do with that now is bring that up to the boil, like all the other sauces. Nice little rolling boil, ticking over, just until it's about reduced by half, and then we're gonna pass that off strain it into another pan, and then put that on a rapid reduce until it's the consistency of the sauce that we like, just so it coats the back of the spoon. Okay, so while the sauce is on reducing on the side of the stove, I'm gonna show you how to prep the venison loin. Now, you can prep the sauce in advance. You don't have to do it at the same time. You know, I'm just multitasking here like a chef does. But if you want to prep this a couple of days in advance, by all means, do this the day before or the day after, whatever's easiest for you. So, venison loin. Uh, any butcher will have this. Just ask for it on the bone or off the bone. I suggest that you ask for it on the bone because uh, it'll actually work out a lot cheaper per kilo for you because they're charging you 
to take the bone off it, which is, it's just pointless. It's so easy to do yourself. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. So the venison loin, you'll notice that there's the bones on the back, which are almost like the rack bones. And then you've got the sinew on the front. So all you wanna do with it is just pull with your fingers. You'll see where the bones are. Get your knife and just follow your knife down the back of the bones. And you'll hear it. You can hear when you've touched the bottom bone. Again, you'll hear it. All the way along. Now just keep on pushing it, like that. Keep pushing it forward, keep pushing it forward. Let your knife just keep on scratching and you'll hear, and you'll see that it starts to come away from the bone. So. I mean, that is so simple to do. Why would you pay an extra four or five pound a kilo when you can just do that at home? Now this, really, really simple. Give it a nice little twist with your knife. Straight down, keep twist again, and it comes off like that. Now continue doing that all the way through the bone, and then you've got the bones for your next venison sauce that you wanna make. So. Now you're left with the loin. So again, a lot of the time, a lot of this stuff comes off with, with your hands. I find it a lot easier if I halve it. I find it easier to work with than trying to work with something that's so long. So again, you'll see yourself where the meat is coming away from the loin. So this can be kept for a nice stroganoff as well, so just this off bit skirt that's on the side of the venison loin that's just peeling away. To keep that, chop that up for another meal. Dice as thick as you want. Have that in a nice venison stroganoff later on during the week. Don't waste that. So we'll just put that on there. And then we're left with our loin. And again, very, very similar to the lamb. Same sort of idea. You've got that sinew that's running across the top. So with your knife, just run your knife through, peel it back, again, through again. All the way down, just discard that. Flip it over, any of that sinew, in with your knife, and just let your knife glide along the back, take all that sinew off. Again, just round it off. Again, flip that over again. Round that off. Keep that few strogging off. One clean venison loin there. And you can also do a Wellington exactly the same way that I did the lamb one. If you want to use venison, entirely up to you. Just kind of look at it in the same way that you'd need to get maybe two little tenderloins, maybe nick a bottom off the the end of the venison, create two little tenderloins, make the process exactly the same way, but use the venison, that can work. So again, in with your knife, follow it right down the bottom, peel all that off, in with your knife on that side, flick it over, get rid of that, this part, use for something else. Now venison's a very, very lean meat, so it doesn't need a lot of cooking when it comes to the venison loin. So if you do, it'll be tough as old boots. So what I suggest is whenever you're cooking anything, try and do it, you know, as if you're cooking a fillet steak, use exactly the same principle. Same principle if you're cooking a loin of lamb. Use all the loins exactly the same. They do not need a lot of cooking. So once we've got to this stage of the venison and we've got two nice loins, what I tend to do is then half that again and I'll work out so I've got one, two, got three nice, one, two. So that is probably gonna serve 
five people. So all we'll do now, knife there, loins on the side, get our chopping board, flip, flip the board over, and our little trick that we did with the cling film before, cling film on the back of the chopping board, using the chopping board almost to guide the cling film, straight towards you, cut, again, straight towards you, cut with your cloth, smooth it out so it's nice, get your venison loin in the centre, again, roll your venison loin, like this, again you can do this with beef fillet, exactly the same way. Now what you can do as well, little trick, pull them towards you and then tie it again, nice and tight, pull that towards you, and then give that a nice tight, top, bottom, off, and you're left with that nice balancing cylinder shape piece of venison, and then all I want you to do with that is pop that in the fridge for about six, seven hours, just till it firms up. Continue the process with all the other loins, and then I'll show you now. This is one that I put in the fridge six, seven hours ago, so it's kept that lovely shape. So when it comes to portioning the venison, before anybody arrives at your dinner party or whatever, I usually get stuff like this done beforehand. So get yourself a tray. Get your venison. Take the bottom off. And then just have a look. One. One nice that medallion. There. Two. That's your second one. And then again, got three. So you've got three nice little medallions of venison and they're all ready to go in the pan later. Now what I do suggest is with meat, and this is where a lot of people always go wrong, they will do that whole process They'll pop the venison in the fridge, they'll portion all the meat and then they'll put the meat back in the fridge again until the friends arrive. The friends will arrive, everybody will sit down for dinner, they'll take the meat straight out the fridge and expect it to cook perfectly straight in a pan. Well it's like anything isn't it? If you've taken something from a cold fridge, it's really really firm, so as soon as it touches the pan it firms up on the outside but the centre of it is still fridge cold. So what I always do whenever it comes to anything cooking like meat maybe an hour, hour and a half or so before your friends arrive, just take your meat out while your sauce is reducing on the side and just leave it to come up to room temperature. That way, when you're cooking your meat, it will cook more evenly and when you rest it, it'll be perfectly cooked. So now the venison's out, resting at room temp for a good hour, hour and a half, I'm just gonna finish off the sauce. So like I said, the sauce has been brought up to the boil now. It's reduced by about a half. So all I'm gonna do, Drain that sauce now. Again, sieve, colander. All through there. Okay. And like so, make sure that's all out. And then, if possible, when at home, Try and use the largest pan you've got. So I've just decanted that into a smaller pan just while we're straining it. Put that pan back on the stove with nothing else in it. And then just decanter it again back into the larger pan. So then all we can do is turn the heat up really, really high, bring that up to a boil, and then a rapid reduce until the sauce consistency is where we want it to be. Which is just going to coat the back of the spoon and give you that nice glaze. <laughs> Thank you.
sauce is on the stove now. That's on a rapid reduce. So we've probably got about 10, 12 minutes left on that until it's the consistency that we want it to be at. The venison loins, they've been out for about an hour and a half now. So all we're gonna do with these now is season them up. I'm using kosher salt here as opposed to just a normal run of the mill table salt. The reason that we use the kosher salt is it's, it's less harsh on the palate. So you don't get that almost like burning salt flavor. So get a good seasoning of salt. Don't be shy on the salt either because obviously you're seasoning the outside of the meat. So get all that salt up. Pan nice and hot for this. A little bit of vegetable oil in the pan. Steak goes in. So just treat this like you would any other steak, usually fillet steak, um, same sort of thickness as well. The, the thing that you've got to be really, really careful is with venison, because it is so lean. If you do overcook it, I would suggest no more than medium. If, that's, if, you, if you like your venison well done, make a venison stew. Don't bother wasting your money on a venison loin. If you want it cooked properly, medium rare, or medium if that's a must. But anything over that is sacrilege. Just get yourself some venison trim and make a nice venison stew if that's how you like it cooked. But if you're gonna do it like this, medium rare to medium. So we want a nice crust and caramelization on the meat. So that's why we get the pan nice and hot. There's no need to stand there. You see a lot of people that constantly move the pan, like because they're moving it, it's gonna caramelize or crisp up even more. It's not, don't touch it. You'll almost hear that rapid sizzle noise will start to mellow out when the meat starts to caramelize enough. So in this pan over here, while the venison's cooking, I've heavily seasoned that again with kosher salt. Over here to serve with it, what I like to serve with this venison dish, I wanna do something that's quite homely as well. I've got a variety of potato which is called a raté potato, which is a French potato. And the way that we cook them, a little bit like previous before where it was we comp feed belly pork, we actually comp feed the potatoes. So vegetable oil in a pan, lots of aromats, garlic, rosemary, thyme, bay leaves. Pop your potatoes in there. Taste the oil as well to make sure you've got the seasoning right. You want it to be quite high in salt as well because it's gonna penetrate the potato. Leave them on the stove at medium heat just until your knife goes slightly through the potato. But don't do it so the potatoes are falling apart because what you want to do is you want to take them off the heat just before they're there and they're nearly cooked and let them cool down completely in the liquid. They're even better the day after, which is what we've done here. So these are full of flavor now. So the way that I want to serve this is just half your rate potatoes. And like I said, it's all about the prep work. So you can cook the potatoes in advance. You can get the venison balantines done in advance. You can get your potatoes halved in advance. So when people come for dinner, all they've got to do, sit down. It's gonna take you 10, 15 minutes tops to produce an amazing meal with no stress. And you can even have a couple of glasses of wine with no drama or sweat. But you're gonna burn anything because you've done everything. So I can hear now the venison, you've got a nice crust on that. Just flip that over in the pan. Again, good caramelization on that side too. Rasso potatoes, like I said, just, we're just gonna halve them. So things that are quite like stress-free to me, uh, a lot of the time when people are cooking at home, they get really, really put off by cooking a dish like this where they think, oh, they've got to have 97 pans on the stove and they're trying to watch everything at once. I kind of think of it like this, if I'm serving a dish with venison and I've gone through all this time and care making these lovely potatoes and everything, why would I bother cooking anything in a separate pan? So the next stage of the venison obviously is we get that nice caramelization on it that we want, which we've got now. Then we're gonna add a little bit of butter. In the pan, I'd probably say that's about half a block of butter, so 125 grams. In there then, a couple of sprigs of rosemary. I've got some nice garlic. Just 
push that down with the back of your hand. Throw that in there. You know, if you like loads of garlic, add loads of garlic. It's entirely up to you. If you don't want to use garlic, you don't have to add it. If you don't want to use the rosemary, you want to use thyme instead. Exactly the same. Give them a nice base to the top of the venison. And then take your ratte potatoes, side down that I've just cooked, cut in half. Pop them in your pan as well. And they'll start to go all bubbly in there. Give them as many as you want, or as little. Venison, see where we're at with that. Right. Oven on, 180 degrees. Venison in the oven, about four, four and a half minutes if you want it medium rare. If you want it medium, I'd go about five or six, depending on the thickness that you cut it. So with these now, I'm probably gonna pop them in the oven four, four and a half minutes, take them out, let them rest at the same time. And meanwhile, while we're doing that, I'll pass the sauce and I'll cook the tender stem broccoli, which we've got here, just in a nice little bit of salted water, and then we're ready to plate up. So venison and potatoes all go in the oven now, 180 degrees. While everything's nearly there, we've got the sauce, which is ready now. That's reduced to the consistency we want. So we're just going to decanter that into a smaller pan. So you'll see that's nice, thick, dark in colour and nice and rich. It's got a nice shine to it too. Take that off. Our pan of salt water has come up to the boil. So we're just going to drop our tender stem broccoli in there. Again, just drop that in there for two, three minutes. Don't boil it. It's meant to be green. It's not meant to be brown. Our venison's ready. Out. So, we just want to rest that. Again, there's our nice little potatoes. And they will have absorbed all that lovely garlic and rosemary and, and thyme while they've just been cooking in the oven. Let's get them nicely warmed through. Okay. Let's pull our sauce off to the side, stop boiling. With your pan, just be careful because it's hot. Just don't waste any of that liquid. Pour that all over the top of the venison while it's resting. Okay. In this little pan, we've got our beetroot chutney. So just going to heat that up, get a bit of warmth through it. We're nearly there to start getting ready to plate up. So yeah, let your venison rest. Give that a good two, three minutes resting time. In the pan now, your sauce is ready. Take that off. Tender stem broccoli, nearly there. Now with the tender stem broccoli and anything like asparagus, people have got this perception in the head that they need to cook these things for more than 10, 15 minutes, and you really, really don't. Bring your water up to the boil with plenty of salt in it to season it. Once it comes up to the boil, drop your tender stem broccoli in, and you'll know when it's cooked, because when it's cooked, you'll start to see a give, actually, in the stem of the broccoli. So I'd say three, four minutes max. Get it straight out of the water and get it on the plate, because any longer than that, you know, you're not far away from a broccoli puree. So in our pan, just a nice little beetroot relish or beetroot chutney. Make this really, really simple. Raw beetroot. Everybody's got a box grater at home, I hope. Or if they haven't, invest in one. Get your beetroot. Instead of using the rough, coarse side of the box grater, which is used for cheddar cheese, turn it round and you'll notice you've got a thinner side, which is for a parmesan. Peel your beetroot, grate it on the box grater. The recipe that I'll give you to go alongside it, it's really, really simple. It's just 100 grams of sugar, and it's 200 grams of white wine vinegar, one shallot, and some juniper berries. All you do is add that to the pan, leave it on the side, and reduce it down. And it'll actually cook the beetroot really quick because you've cut it so fine through that small little parmesan grease, and you'll end up with a nice little sticky chutney. And as everybody knows, venison and beetroot is an absolute dream together. So here's our pan now, tender stem, you can see that it starts to get a little bit of give. Place that on there. Let's 
That's so. Our beetroot chutney is also ready. Meat's resting. Right, so it's time now. We can start plating up. It's entirely up to you how you want to plate this up. You've got total free reign. You can be completely chefy, which I'll show you a couple of different ways. Or you can just do it if you want to cook for the whole family. So if you're chefy, get your potatoes. I don't know. Cut them in half. Put maybe three, four little halves. Dot it around the plate. Nice little dollop, your beetroot chutney. Make them two or three of that. Okay, just give your fingers a wipe because obviously beetroot stains them. Get a couple of pieces of the nice little tender stem broccoli. Place that around the plate. Your nice piece, piece of venison. Nice carve, nice and pink. Finish that with a little bit of molten sea salt on top. Let's put one there, I know. Put one over here. Okay, if you're doing it at home, I'm gonna do it a little bit more rustic. Same again, cut your venison. How about that? On the plate. Get a nice big dollar. Your beetroot chutney. A couple of pieces of tender stem. Nice new potatoes. And then with this one. Don't be shy. Nice bit of the venison sauce. Okay, finished. And that's it. So there's my roasted venison loin, stunning venison sauce with a little bit of cognac, beetroot chutney, roasted rate potatoes, and tender sandbox. Mm -hmm.